this is Eric Engine Engineer and at the end of the video this ball is going to follow you along a spline. Let's get started. Today we will talk about what is a spline and how to use it. Often you will hear something like a spline is a curve connecting given points smoothly. But this has not to be the case. By talking about smoothness of curves we mean the absence of these spikes. But in math we do not demand a specific smoothness. So a spline is a curve connecting given points as smooth as you want. When using splines I often want to get specific locations along a spline. We are going to talk about these functions and what they do in Unreal. Starting with a get location at distance function, we want to get the relative or world location if we travel the spline from the start along its curve a given distance. The get spline length function returns the length of the path of your spline as a float. The get number of spline points function just counts your spline points and returns an integer. The get location at point does what it says. It gives you the location at a given point. There are two more honorable mentions. The find location closest to world location, which we will also have a talk about, and the is closed loop, which we will explore later in the Unreal hands-on part. The closest to world location function gives you the closest point to your world location along the spline. Further readings and the connections to these topics are Interpolation is finding curves and functions to connect given points. Most times we use polynomials to interpolate between points. Bezier curves are a specific way to use the polynomials and these techniques are heavily used in vector graphics. We will put a spline component into an actor, place the actor into our scene, add some spline points and explore the get location at distance function and the find closest location on our spline. We will do this in the default first person character template in Unreal. Right click in your content browser to make a new blueprint class, select actor as your new blueprint class. We're going to call this spline actor, hit enter to open our spline actor, go to add component, search for your spline, you want to add the utility spline, click on it, now we get a spline in our actor. We're going to compile this, save our blueprint, close it, drag this spline actor into our scene, let's raise it a little bit. There you see there's this white dot at the end of your spline. We can move this dot a little bit into our scene. If we start to hover with this actor selected over our spline, we see our cursor changes. We can right click on our spline and add spline point here. Move the spline point up a little bit and there you see we get the nice smooth curve in our scene. Now I want to move a sphere along our spline, so we're going to add a sphere basic shape into our spline. Go to your viewport, select this basic shape material, exchange it to the basic asset 01. This is a nice red so that you can really see what is going on. Let's have a look. It is at the moment in the relative location of 000. zero, zero and we're going to change the location of this sphere in the construction script. We will use the construction script so we can see the changes in our editor. We want to move the sphere with the get location at distance along spline function. To do this we want to get a reference to our spline component into our event graph. We want also to have a reference to our sphere. We're going to set the relative location of our sphere with the construction script. Now we want to have the get location at distance along spline function. Now we only need the distance. We can promote this to a variable. 
we can save this name. We want to make this instance editable and expose it in on spawn. As we are setting the relative location of our sphere, we can use the coordinate space as local. If you want to change the world location, you have to select world in this drop down menu. We are going to set this to local and put the return value of this function into the new location of our sphere. Hit compile, hit save and now let's have a look in our viewport. Selected the spline actor, we can see in the right pane in the details that we have now a possibility to change the distance in this default section. Let's zoom out a little bit. By increasing the distance, we will move this sphere along our spline. Beautiful. I talked about the setting is closed loop in my presentation and I will show you now what exactly is going to happen if we set the is closed the loop to true. You can select in the spline actor in the details under the spline section there is this one checkbox called closed loop. Let's have a look what is happening if we set this to true. You see this is the starting point and this is the end point of our spline. If we check this box closed loop, hit compile and save, now you will see that it connected the end to the start. And if we start moving along this spline, it's going to move back to the beginning if we are over the, if we surpass the length of our spline. It just moves back. Nice. Now that this is working, let's make the sphere follow our player character along the spline. We will uncheck our closed loop and let's add some, some spline points in our scene. At the moment it is pretty empty and I want to make a small like parkour for our ball to follow us. We will do this by just moving these points along our scene these three points let's make a nice big curve through our level let's move this point a little bit in this direction and this looks good back in our blueprint we want start to start by getting a reference in the begin play to our player character we want to cast to the first person player character to first person character as object we want to get the player pawn let's get player pawn and to get to save this reference we are going to right click the as first person character pin and promote this to a variable I want to rename this and delete the S and now this variable name is only first person character. Nice, let's compile and save this blueprint. We want to set on the relative location of our sphere in every tick to the closest point along the spline. Now we're going to start by activating our tick, set relative location of our sphere connect the event tick to the set relative location we also need a reference to our spline and we're going to search for the closest closest location find location closest to world location now we have to provide a world location for this function to work, we will connect the output of this function to the new location of the set relative location. And now we need this world location input field. And we will just take the reference to our first person character and get, get world location of our capsule component. Input here. And this is looking good. Let's compile and save it. Let's try it in game. Play. Nice. This is our sphere. Come here, sphere is sphere. 
Ooh, our sphere is following us. Let's shoot it. Beautiful. As you see, it's um, jumping at this point. This is because, well, this um, turn is pretty narrow and it just jumps to all these locations. You can put in a move component which moves the sphere always to the location you want it to have to be it like less snappy and more movie. But this is all left to the viewer as an exercise. <laughs> In the next tutorial I will make a spline based ladder to climb up walls and all the other different stuff you can climb up. If you liked the tutorial, leave a like and subscribe. Watch me on Twitch every Monday and Thursday in the evening. And as always, keep developing!